struggling to restrain demands for candy at the store creating chaos and embarrassment for all we also know the kids who are constantly on edge in fear of their father's wrath there's a time in a kid's life when they can get away with tantrums but there comes a time when they need to know the consequences of their actions we don't want sport kids yet at the same time we don't want them growing into anxious insecure adults so how can we as parents more effectively raise disciplined and secure children or as proverbs 22 verse 6 says to train up a child in the way he should go and when he is old he will not depart from it I have been wrestling with how to effectively make a positive impact in my children's lives and the Bible has been a place for support in times of doubt and uncertainty. Under the Old Testament law, the penalty for out of control children was severe as outlined in Deuteronomy 21 verse 18 to 21. If a man has a stubborn and rebellious son which will not obey the voice of his father or the voice of his mother and all the men of his city shall stone him with stones that he died clearly this law was not intended for tantrum throwing toddlers but your five-year-old could grow up to deserve such a penalty if his disrespect and rebellion were not curbed early the old testament may seem archaic but it's still the word of god modern day laws are no different most states even countries around the world have no problem sentencing lawbreakers to death the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 1 to 2 says, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. The Christian context of the word charity means kindness and tolerance in judging others. It's no different from the golden root, loving your neighbor as you love yourself. Without love, all your good intentions to nurture a child are worthless. It doesn't resonate if it's coming from a place of control, judgment, and resentment. When you discipline, you're teaching charity. So you want to lead by example if you want to see lasting results. Unlike the medical establishment's alarming quickness to diagnose a child with some disorder and perfectly fine with prescribing medication for it, before blaming disrespect to children, we need to start with the parents. Children don't know better. We're all born with an inherited sinful nature. As Psalm 51 verse 5 explains, Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. The fault for disrespect for children rests upon the shoulders of those who should have trained them and did not. And the pill will not fix this problem. So for starters, it would be of immense help to spend lots of time with your children to get to know them. Every child is unique and may require different incentives to help empower their decision making. It takes consistency, love, and understanding of each child's unique personality. Uninterrupted, fully present family time will be the greatest gift you can give to a defiant child. Kids inherently understand their true potential. They want to participate and to be of help. Unfortunately, they sometimes bite off more than they can chew. If they're consistently struggling with checking off their entire to-do list, it usually comes down to having set way too high of expectations. We want high standards for our kids, but that's only going to happen if they start small. In Mia Hell, Chit Sent Me High's book, Flow, he emphasizes that there must be a balance between challenge and skill level. Two challenging of a task causes anxiety. If it's too easy, it causes boredom. You don't want either and it will take constantly trying new things and readjusting to find their sweet spot. Attention span is one to keep in mind too. Kids want to spend most of their time daydreaming and free playing and that's great. It's good for their development. However, they also have an attention span for other duties. Knowing what it is for your child will reduce a lot of the frustration experienced when training our kids. I have found that mornings are usually a good time to address these issues. If they're struggling and you sense they truly are, adjust the standards appropriately. 
I don't have much memory of what my five-year-old self was like, but I do remember going through struggles, feeling pain and enduring trauma. Tapping into that headspace helps us relate to kids better. Empathy towards your younger kids will go a long way in helping set reasonable expectations for their limited abilities. It's simple, yet not an easy task. That's why the Apostle Paul emphasizes patiently enduring as he continues in the letter to the Corinthians in verse 4 and verse 6. Seven, saying charity suffereth long and is kind charity envieth not charity vaunteth not itself is not puffed up beareth all things believeth all things hopeth all things endureth all things looked up through the lens of love and the golden rule patiently and lovingly enduring your child's inconsistency is what charity is all about when enforcing discipline there's the debate about differing needs depending on the gender of your child. From my experience having a boy and a girl child, I agree. We're trying to instill the same virtues, charity, diligence, patience, and so on. In both boys and girls, the standards should be identical, but we should also respect the differences between the genders. For example, my son wants my approval whether or not I'm being genuine. Of course, I make sure to let him know I'm proud of him, not just because he did something great but because he is my son compliments for my daughter have to be genuine she more easily discerns disingenuousness they both love competition but i find that my son is way more motivated by incentives that require high competitiveness my daughter on the other hand prefers affection understanding the subtle differences lets you know it's okay to discipline differently Time flies is what all seasoned parents tell me. It shall all pass faster than you think, they say. So when I look back at how I handled myself during this seemingly difficult season, I want to be proud and happy. Remember that parents are encouraged to model the selfless and sacrificial love exemplified by Jesus Christ. This involves putting children's needs before yours and demonstrating patience, kindness, and understanding. Thus, creating an environment where love becomes the guiding force in shaping a child's character above all else how do you want your child to remember how you treated her immaturity she will grow up that's a given the question is will she look at you as a beaming example of unconditional love or one that deserves the consequences of exaggerating your virtues while setting unreasonable standards Jesus Christ warns us about this in Matthew 18 verse 6 which says but whoso shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me it were better for him that a millstone were hung about his neck and that he were drowned in the depth of the sea. Thank you for spending your time with me. If you found value here, subscribe and I will see you soon.